Hey everybody, Brad with Full Spectrum Survival. Just a few hours ago, a man got into a rental car in Toronto, jumped the curb and killed at least nine people, injuring 16 or more. Something that any teenager or any adult can do. Yet this will be acted upon. We were talking about it this week, that your firearms, the way that you are able to carry a firearm, purchase, own, and protect you and your family will be acted upon in the next decade. The rights that you have right now, I don't care where you're at in the, in the world, whether you're in the UK and you have very little firearm rights, whether you're in Canada and you have less than American firearm rights, or whether you're in the United States and you have a right to own a weapon, wherever that right stands today, it will be less in the next decade. The global powers don't want you to own a firearm because that is a resistance against tyranny. And they're afraid that one day you might wake up in servitude and say, wait a second, things are not as they seem. And I'm not buying this anymore. But I've got a question for you. Will they outlaw this vehicle? Will they make it illegal to drive this? A lot of people are gonna say, absolutely, they're on their way to doing it with driverless cars. Then what that's gonna do is limit so that only hackers can take over the control of those cars. They'll become the, the terrorists. They'll become the extremists. So why are they going after this? Let's talk about the differences for a moment. Any teenager can get into this and cause extreme damage. Any adult can get into this and cause extreme damage. Somebody walking through a hallway with this can be taken out by just one other person. If you are in close contact with somebody using a firearm, what do you think you have more chance at altering the act that they're doing? Do you have more of a chance of altering their act of using a firearm to harm people or standing in front of a car going 30 miles an hour down a roadway? You as a person can act against another person using one of these. You can't act against a person using one of these. There's nothing you can do but be a victim and get out of the way. Now it's been years that we have been talking about, at least three years that we said the new face of medium casualty events was a vehicle. You don't need this. Certain people, evil people are drawn to this because of its glamor. They're now changing and they're being drawn to this because of its usability, because of its ease of access. They just get into a car and harm people. But without people owning things like this, tyranny will continue and this will get worse. Please understand that your rights as they stand today, no matter what they are, are going to get worse in the next 10 years. Understand that the guy in London, the guy in Toronto, people all over the world will use vehicles as means of medium casualty events. So how do you prepare for that? That's the root of this video that I want you to think about. How do you prepare for a, a casualty event when a vehicle is used? So let's talk about that. You're going to need to be on your game with situational awareness, no matter where you're at. Right now you go to the grocery store, you walk from your car to the, uh, the front of the store, with relative security and peace of mind because you don't think that that's a place that you will necessarily be harmed, especially not in broad daylight, especially if you live in a nice neighborhood. You don't think of that as being a dangerous situation. But when somebody gets into a vehicle, they can change that very quickly. You don't need to be in a uh, dangerous part of the city. People will actually seek out to use medium casualty events using vehicles in places where they'll be least expected. Fairs, parks, business ways, busy sidewalks. Be situationally aware. Express your right, if you're in a country where you're able to, to own a firearm. Because that will help you help others in the event of a crisis. Do not let the tyrannies, the tyrannical governments of the world take away your right to protect yourself and protect your family and protect those who don't want to protect themselves. 
Look at Nicaragua. We did a, a story about that this morning where the government opened fire on their own people for protesting for government change. Open fire. With all the technology and riot control right now, do they need to open fire? Absolutely not. But you've got to jump through hoops and in many cases have a psychologist sign off that you're mentally capable to have a firearm in Nicaragua. So people most often don't. But the criminals still do, of course. They get their hands on firearms because what do they care if it's illegal? They make pipe guns because what do they care if it's illegal? They're already a criminal. There's a disease, a virus going on in the minds of humans right now that look at this and they get scared. A dad was at his park expressing his right to his first and second amendment wearing a shirt that said, I'll control my gun, you control your kids. He was there with his daughter, open carrying his sidearm. Supposedly and reportedly, a woman freaked out, called the police, got all these other parents to freak out. Police show up, the man did nothing wrong. They weren't able to do anything about it, but it shows you the mentality of people who look at this and see fear, see death when they look at this. This is nothing but a tool. Ask the guy who drove one of these into nine people today. Ask the guy who got into a semi truck and drove it across people. It's just a tool. This is just a tool. And evil, evil people, bad people are going to use those tools no matter what they are. Whether it's this or this or a screwdriver or a hammer or a slingshot or a grenade. No matter what it is, it's a tool for destruction. And bad people will continue to do bad things no matter how regulated they are. Because bad people don't care. Please, take it to heart. If you have a chance to vote for it, use that freedom that we have in the republic for which we stand here in America. Use that freedom and vote for it and say, no, that's not right. Too often we have, we're becoming non-confrontational with our expression of First Amendment, Second Amendment rights. We're becoming non-confrontational because you don't want to be uh, overly demonized in the mainstream media. We've got to kick that thought. Be intelligent. Stand up for your right. And let people know that it's okay. This is nothing but a tool. If someone doesn't have access to this, they have access to this. If they don't have access to a, a vehicle, they have access to a kitchen knife. What are you going to do? Outlaw kitchen knives? Guess what? In London, they're outlawing knives. You can't walk down the street with a knife. And the London mayor openly says there is absolutely no reason for a human to carry a knife. It's a mental virus. A depreciation of cognitive ability that makes people afraid of things that they shouldn't be. It's just like being afraid of the dark. There's nothing there. The dark can't hurt you. It's people with darkness inside them that can. Please, guys, be awake and aware as much as possible. Look to these events as learning lessons. One, for your own situational awareness for your family so that you can say, I'm not going to let that happen to me or my family. And the other, to know that they are coming to remove your right to protect yourself. Guys, from Kelly and I to you and yours, I hope that you will stay safe and keep watch.